I welcome you all in the Baiju's exam prep, the most comprehensive preparation app for all exams. So today uh, in our guest lecture, we have uh, Dr. Manjur Mir Ahmed. Dr. Manjur Mir Ahmed is a, he's a senior assistant professor and uh, head of the Department of Bioresources, School of Biological Sciences, University of Kashmir. Dr. Manjur sir did his PhD in cancer immunology from Imtech JNU, and uh, he has uh, more than 30 publications. So welcome Dr. Manjur sir. Uh, please brief us about your academic journey and uh, guide students. Yes, good evening all. Thank you Lalit for this introduction and thanks for the invitation to the Baijus. I'm thankful to the Baijus India as well as to Lalit sir for inviting me to this guest lecture series. Uh, I am actually presently heading the Department of Bioresources in University of Kashmir, uh, which uh, was sanctioned to the Depart uh, University of Kashmir in 2008. And finally, in 2021, we got the recognition as a separate department as well as a separate research center. Regarding my academic background, I have my master's in life sciences uh, with a gold medal. And then I went on to qualify the GRF examination way, way back in 2003 in the June category. And then I qualified again it in 2003 December, again in 2004 June, and again in 2004 December. Because I was trying for the SPM uh, Shama Prashad Mukherjee scheme is one among the top most GRF candidates which it is being given to. After that, I first initially went to the NCBS Bangalore and then after I joined the lab formally at reproductive biology in AMS, early intro medical sciences, but left one fellowship over there and then joined, activated the second fellowship, finally at Institute of Microbial Technology through Jawaharlal Nehru University. And it started from there and uh, I completed my PhD in 2008. Then I was appointed as an assistant professor in 2009 and I topped that list of Jammu and Kashmir Public Service Commission. After that, I uh, was appointed as the nodal officer of Kupwara University campus to establish a separate university campus at that district. And then I um, joined the Department of Bioresources University of Kashmir in 2012. And in 2013, I went to work in a research project on neurorevascularization, uh, which was run by three universities, uh, Spain University, Barcelona University, Spain, and Manchester University, UK, and Majma University, Saudi Arabia. So I came back in 2016 and started my services here. So that's how, how it started. Okay, thank, thank you so much for your brief uh, introduction about your academic journey. Uh, so, sir, what, what is like, abhi aap jo research kar rahe hai, what, are, what are the uh, areas of your research and what are other achievements during your uh, current research? So, usko thoda sa ek okay. brief introduction karte hai, then Fine. we will move further. So, uh, during my PhD, I uh, worked with uh, reverse co-stimulation concept. Because by that time, people were talking about that the co-stimulatory molecules or signals are going from antigen-presenting cell to B cell or T cell. But we proved that the signals can be delivered in the reverse direction. Oh. Fine. So uh, this was the cancer biology. And side by side, we were also trying to look for if these co-stimulatory molecules can inhibit the growth of intracellular pathogens like mycobacterium, tuberculosis, salmonella, and et cetera. Then in my uh, um, uh, this uh, period at the uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, other uh, other universities, I uh, did the research on the neurosciences. It was only a brief period of time. Then way back when I came back to the Srinagar uh, and joined the Kashmir University, I started my work in cancer biology. And side by side, we have a project from the DST CERB on um, drug resistance in mycobacterium tuberculosis and that how this um, mutations at the local level because Kashmir being a tourist spot where the people from all other areas come over here. And then it might be that the different strains might have come over here and there might have been mutations in them. And what are the different, what are those different mutations which are present in the population? Because we are collecting the samples from all the different reference lab labs and then sending, uh, we had characterized them and then send them for the genome sequencing. We are waiting for the results and then we will be characterizing them if we found some different mutations which are present in the TB patients of local Kashmiri population, then we can develop some guidelines or some other things regarding that. 
That's Second great. thing is that my um, research, current research focus is also on the medicinal plants. We have collected as of now four medicinal plants belonging to Pretelaria royale, and then another is Geranium volchianum. Then we have Delphinium royale and Delphinium kashmirianum. We had extracted the uh, many extracts we have obtained from these plants. Then finally, we had sent them for LCMS and GCMS data, and we got that we had a good in vitro activity. Besides anti-cancer activity, we got a good in vitro activity so that we went for the molecular docking and molecular docking simulations. And then uh, recently we published one of the paper in uh, Journal of Ethnopharmacology, uh, Ethnopharmacology uh, having an impact factor more than 4.5. And then another paper is in review in scientific reports. One is in medicinal chemistry and uh, one is in anti-cancer agents. So, um, and one is in chemical biological interactions having an impact that has come for the revision it's all 5.2 impact factor. So this is regarding the medicinal plants. And third area is the combinational therapy. We are looking for certain drug molecules like adipine, cryptolipine. These are alkaloids or um, plant secondary metabolites, which we are looking along with the all already approved FDA drugs. So in combination or together, how that can impact the survival of the triple negative breast cancer cells. We are at present looking for the in vitro models, but later on we will take this to the in vivo system as well. Okay. And uh, regarding the publication processes, if I talk about, uh, I had uh, published almost 35 papers as of now. And some are with good impact factors. Recently, we published one of the papers in uh, seminars in cancer biology having an impact of almost 16. Then we published in cellular oncology having an impact of seven. And then many others in cancer biology and cancer biomarkers uh, and ethnopharmacology and uh, breast cancer and so on. So during the last two years, we had almost published um, around 17 research and uh, review articles in different, uh, pub with different publishers, having a cumulative impact factor of more than 100. That's then um, regarding the books, what I believe that are having a more impact, uh, what you actually do research and then you disseminate it to the grassroots level. So we had published almost 15 books as of now. Uh, this year, we are uh, in the process of finalizing the fourth book. Three uh, are already in the pipeline. One is on the combination therapy in cancer. One is in the combination therapy in the triple negative breast cancer using different approaches. Both of them are with the Elsevier. And one is the human pathogenic microbes, disease and concerns. All the books have 10, 10 chapters each. And presently, we are working with one book, which is um, um, the role of tumor microenvironment in triple negative breast cancer. And one more is in the pipeline with the Springer, that is the role of CDK, cyclin dependent kinases, in breast cancer. Besides this, we had developed in two th from 2000, last two years, I can say, we had developed two MOOC modules, massive open online courses for undergraduate and postgraduates. One is in the endocrinology and one is in immunology. Both are having 44 lecture modules and they are available free of cost on the SWAM platform, as well as the, uh, you can get the access on my uh, web page. Uh, then two more MOOC courses have been sanctioned to me this year by the UGC Academic Advisory Council. One is the human genetics and another is the human population genetics. So we are also in the process of developing these two MOOCs uh, during this year and next year, inshallah. Great, and great, great, Varsa. At, at present, I am having two research projects. One is from the DST CERB uh, and another is from the Jammu and Kashmir Science, Technology and Innovation Council. So that's it. What Besides that, we have submitted some projects to ICMR as well as to CERB. Great, 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 sir. Sir, बहुत ही अच्छा जो है आपका work भी है और एक जो है कम like majorly जो है immunology based work है जिसको आपने जो है plant extract को use करके भी जो है बहुत सारे जो है काम कर रहे हैं secondary metabolites को use करके that's great. So sir, अभी currently जो है आप आपके under में कितने ऐसे student हैं जो आपके under में like जिन students को आप mentor कर रहे हो how many students are doing PhD under you currently और कितने student आप तो जो pass out हो चुके हैं जो आपके under में PhD किए हैं Yes, uh, as of now, I had mentored almost 
22 PG students for their dissertations and project works, uh, which is a four, four months course uh, and four credit course. So I had mentored uh, the 22 students during these, uh, the, these years at the University of Kashmir based on different themes and different uh, types. Some are with the bioinformatics work, some are with the uh, actual lab work. Uh, and besides that, there are eight PhD students who are enrolled presently with me. And two of them are going to submit this month only or maybe next month at the most. And uh, four of them had, uh, two of them had joined in 2008. They will be submitting later this year. And four have joined in 2019 and their work is at different stages. Okay. Great, sir. So, sir, we are going to discuss some of the students who want to come to the research. So, what can be the entry level in science research, according to you? Like from schooling or from bachelor, from master's? Okay. The entry level in sciences, uh, although there are no such boundaries, but keeping in view the Indian context, where yes. the mostly people go towards the sciences because early in the morning we were conducting one GAT test for Aloha students, fine. And there we were also mentoring them and showing some type of path to them. But most of the answers we get is after 12th, they want to become the engineers or they have become want to become the doctors. And so the ones that get selected to that, the science part, this is fine. Although they can go for sciences after completing the MBBS and research work, there are instances. But unlike in West and America, where most of the people, even if they qualify the MBBS and other exams, they still go into the research. We have some examples like Muhammad Rafi, who is one of the great immunologists. He has a background from MBBS stream. So, but this is very rare. And then if we talk about the uh, going to the sciences, the government of India in 1999 started the INSPIRE scheme and national talent search scheme. Then those schemes are uh, looking for different talent pools from sixth and then there is Olympiad also. So they look for people to come to the science or give awareness to the people what are the benefits of coming to the science and they provide some sort of financial assistance. Then, uh, then many other schemes are there which uh, actually attract the people towards the science stream. Uh, then INSPIRE is a scheme from um, fifth, to fifth onwards, uh, means from fifth standard onwards, the, uh, these, these schemes are there. But um, preferably there are the schemes after 12th because 12th is considered to be a benchmark in Indian education system. 10 plus two, when we say, which has been replaced in the national education policy by five plus three plus three plus two. But earlier it was 10 plus two. So um, then at 10 plus two or graduation and masters, these are the three um, entry levels where a person can go towards the research. Because if you want to join the ISA, you have a scheme of KB, KG, uh, similarly, if you, uh, and then there are other uh, channels also, three channels of going into the ISER, because we have six ISERs in, across India. ISER Pune, we have ISER Bhopal, ISER Mahalpur, we have, and ISER Mohali, we have, and ISER Kolkata, Bhopal. we have, yes, and yes. then ISER uh, Tirupati. Also Tirupati yes. So six ISERs we have, they have a system of admitting the students for science programs through three different channels. One is the KVGPA, which the people had to go for that scheme, or then they have the um, central and state board exams where they call the top 5% of the people, or then they have their own JE advanced, those people who have um, the rank within 15,000. Earlier it was 10,000. Now, if they have a rank of JE exams uh, within 15,000, then they are eligible. Then they conduct their own entrances as well, and you get a good fellowship you can join the BSMS program. Same is the case with the central universities. We have a pool of 14 central universities in India, which throw their common entrance test, central universities, uh, common admission C -U -C -E -T, test. yes, exactly. UCET. They also attract people to join the science streams and then give an integrated degree of BSMS without wasting the time of graduation to go for the master's in search of the master's degrees again. Then there is a VOS A program, Women Scientist program. The, then there is Inspire program, SHE, SHE. You can go after 12th and join, and you'll be provided the 
um, 80,000 rupees scholarship every year. Then there is another program like Inspire uh, Fellows and Inspire Faculty as well. This can be uh, after the graduation to go and join the master's program, or it can be uh, that you, after you complete your doctorate program, then you go and you are being provided the fellowship for a period of five years. So DST faculty program. Then if you complete your um, PhDs, then there are NPDF programs, national postdoc fellow programs. But I consider that after graduation, the entry for science level because the 10 plus two engineering and um, medical bag, those people who want to make entry over there, that is over now. The, the, the You are left with the limited choices. And if you move towards the science uh, as a career, then this is the best opportunity for you to go after graduation or to go after post-graduation by qualifying certain exams, like we have the GRF nets, we have the uh, ICAR net, then we have the ICMR net. Similarly, we have the DBTs offering the fellowships. Then there so, are many exams. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, uh, these are some alternative after MSc, uh, BSc, and MSc. So for, after BSc, people can choice for MS, B, MS uh, integrated PhD program, or after completing their MSc, they can directly join the PhD program. So by, by qualifying these exams like CSIR, NET, JRF, ICMR, JRF, DBT, JRF, and CUCET, apart from that, universities have their own uh, entrance own systems. Yes, yes, yes. And in this case, sir, we talk about ICERS, there are, there are uh, six ICERS, which uh, is an exam Typhor GS, which is through the selection, which is basically, apart from the ICERS, which is NCBS, hai, uh, NBRI, Debi, hai, NII, hai, RCB, yes. hai, yes, sir, JG Bills. Hai. Yeah, exactly. JG Bills. JG Bills exam is there for yes. these three institutes of Department of Biological Sciences at Mumbai. And there is NCBS at Bangalore. Then there is another institute, um, Tiffer at Hyderabad. So yes, Tata yes. Institute of Fundamental Research. So you can uh, opt for those as well. They have a, a criteria of going for the, the PhD program or this, uh, this science research program, where if you have... Uh, for example, for uh, these three institutes that con uh, conduct the examination, JG Bills, joint entrance exam, joint graduate entrance examination for these three institutes. Then they have their own criteria. Once you qualify that, then they can put a slab over there, what they actually want. But the examination is not only the whole criteria. They ask for the recommendation letters, they ask exactly. for the write-ups. Then yes. there are interviews, then, then so many things play a role in getting to these top three institutes of the country. Basically, the, more, that exam is, I think, the, the first level of the entry. Then there are, yes, are the write-ups, there are recommendations, and there are then interviews. Yes. Okay, good. And, and one more uh, entry that they want, that is the, if you are among the top 10% of the CSIR GRF net qualifiers, you can also make an entry. Entry okay, to so these there, three, there, three there, is a, there, is a, uh, there is a direct entry for those people. There is a direct entry. Alternate okay. method is that if you are in the top 10% of the, uh, the CSIR, JRF net or UGC net and many other net fellowship exams, then you can also uh, get entry into these institutes. Okay, sir, good. So, uh, uh, and so, if you sir, qualify that, then mm -hmm. uh, you have to send simply a mail to that PhD at ncbs.res.int and they will reply to you. Okay, group. So, so basically, we are guiding the students who are after MSc, who after MSc, who are 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 after MSc, Regarding the motivation part, what you are talking about, motivation is simply that you had to find at the end of the day what you are getting from this. And what are the options after completing your BSc and completing your MSc? It, it depends upon from person to person, his likes and dislikes and the opportunities available before him or her. If you find that as of now in the West, the science is being is an uh, actually a lucrative job and it is an considered a decent job where the scientists have the say in even policy making and many other things unlike in this part of the world which is not the case 
but still when you find after completing you have limited choices after completing the graduation levels some pool goes to the civil services and here and there then whatever remains there then uh, the, those the some some will be uh, they, they have good job opportunities because once you complete the master's degree and you want to go for the phd or you want to go for the postdoc the, all universities are open for you as jobs you cannot get a job in a university until unless you don't have a phd or you don't have a national awesome. eligibility test qualified exam with you exactly. so phd has been made mandatory to work in uh, these universities from now in nep so that is that you have a um, if if the recent survey is to be believed that there are almost 37000 assistant professor to professor level positions available and it's a huge huge chunk 37000 positions vacant and every day we hear that new universities are coming up and when we talk about the nep which is talking about doubling the environment uh, this enrollment ratio Presently, it is 23%. They want to double it to 50% by 2033, uh, 2030. So in next eight years, we have to double the enrollment ratio. That means we have to create more infrastructure, more faculties, and more job vacancies. Fine. Second thing, we are talking about the change in GDP, you know, what we are spending on the education sector. At now, we are roughly spending around 3% of our GDP on this education sector. But there is a provision in the national education policy which will talk about 6% of GDP. And it is a huge amount of money. Exactly. Doubling double the budget double. means. Exactly. And then there is a talk of that 20,000 crore rupees central pool fund will be there for research, which will be available. In the, uh, after the national um, education policy 2020 comes into effect from 2022, that is this year only. So a lot of job opportunities will come. And this is a motivation for the students to go ahead. And you are being paid where you are getting a degree. For example, so many fellowship exams are there. Unlike this, you will not be getting education simultaneously and you will be paid. And this is the only sector uh, in think in present circumstances where you are being paid and you are at the same time doing research and you are getting a degree. Then after degree, it's not that just you had to stop. There are ways and means continuity and there is a continuity of opportunities. If you complete your PhD while ha having a fellowship, you can go for the NPDF postdoc if you didn't enter into the job market. Then after NPDF, you go to the Ramalinga Swami Fellow, you go to the mm, many other Ramanujan Fellows. If not, then you are having the entire world at your disposal. You can go for postdoc because there is no restriction of one year, two year. You can do postdoc for 10, 20, 30 years as, as much as you like. And then again, uh, and then have the exposure. And this is the only field besides IT where the there are um, enormous opportunities in the West as well as uh, in the United States. And most of the people from this part of the world are presently pursuing uh, either the postdoctorates or uh, faculties in different universities across the globe. So that is the motivation. If you want to go to the uh, foreign countries for, for, for job avenues, then this is the major sector rather what I can say. And this should be a motivation. And then the fellowships, uh, availability of a lot of fellowships in different so different agencies like DBT is offering you the fellowship, ICMR is offering you the fellowship. Then there is a CSIR, you know, Gandhi, offering CSIR is offering. Then there is Indira Gandhi single girl child that is offering you a fellowship. Vos scientists, Serb is offering you the fellowships. So you have a lot of opportunities. And in next uh, few years, it's going to be double because when the GDP expenditure on education sector will be exactly. more focus is on innovation and science research. So that should be the motivation for a student to go for the net GRF exam, prepare uh, himself or herself for these because the opportunities are enormous. Okay, sir, you have a lot of information about East CSIR net and other fellowships. That is great. And in this case, students who have problems where suppose they have qualified the exam. They are preparing uh, for these exams, these fellowship exams. And what are the most significant consideration for candidate uh, for, for a candidate for interview after passing these exams? Like, how can he prepare? Or, how can you guide him? That if you suppose in a particular university or in a particular research institute, you are going for interview for a PhD, then uh, how uh, he or she can prepare? Uh, Sir, so there is a very important question. Uh, there is a very important question. 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 There is a
Yes. So this is a very important part exactly. because once you qualify a national level eligibility test or JRF exam, you had a fellowship. You the, Now the second most and the toughest part is that to choose a research institute or an institute per se as a university and get admission over there. This is the most typical and difficult part of your decision making. Because uh, at the same time, you had to uh, take in consideration the funding of that research lab. You have to take in consideration the impact of the boss. You have to take in consideration the NIRF ranking, the NAC accreditation of that institute, because once tomorrow, this is going to have a huge impact on that. Based on that, some of the universities are focusing on that you have to give them a scientific writer. Fine. And in, in interview, they ask mostly the questions to you around that. So you need to prepare that, write a scientific, um, um, this is, um, the, uh, and that what is achievable. Uh, because, because I was in one of the interviews, one of the candidates says that we will go to the Mars and then bring some samples from there and then do the research like this and that. Although there is no harm in that. But what is executable? There you also write the projects. There is one part which is executable and one which is not executable. So this type of research, you have to be realistic. You have to have novel ideas, which are full of novelty, which are uh, have innovativeness in them. And after that, you, you write that setup or scientific document. You have to be master of that, that anything out of that can be asked to you. Second thing is that if you are going for a PhD interview, you'll be mostly asked about the techniques, what you have learned during your masters and other, other subjects. Third thing, you will be asked some questions about aptitude, how you deal with the problem in hand. If that will be given a problem to you, this, this is to be done, this is to be executed, how you will approach that. And besides that, the confidence level of a child or a student is to be tested over here. So that you had to be really confident. That will only be when your concepts will be clear about a particular problem. So that is how the students can prepare for that. Besides so, sir, having the theoretical okay. knowledge. Good. So there are some students who is asking some question on our YouTube channel. So one of the student has asked, sir, is it compulsory to crack NAT exam during MSc or after completing MSc? Please elaborate. So what's your so, view? Can so, I repeat? So the, Hmm. So the uh, answer to this is the sooner you get it, the better it is. Yeah, exactly. If you are because... getting it in the MSc, then you are saving a lot of time because once you your results of masters will be out, so you have a JRF net you are having in your hand, you are having a good amount of time because the time frame when the these research institutes or the universities offer you the PhD position, the research positions, that is very narrow. Within two to three months, all of this, most of the universities ask you for April to June. And by June, it's almost closed. So if you are earlier, when your exam results are not out, so uh, and you are having a JRF with you, so that is the only best opportunity what you can have. So try to clear it as early as possible in your career. Maybe it's in the second semester, third semester, fourth semester. By the time your results are out, you are you are eligible for MSc admissions. This PhD, oh, admissions, PhD, admission. PhD exactly. admissions, PhD admissions in any of the institutes. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, there is a uh, my, there is a personal question from my side. Is there any difference uh, between pursuing PhD in a university campus or versus uh, like? Uh, research organization uh, institute like CSIR Institute, DBT Institute, ICMR Institute. Is there any difference uh, like uh, like for resources and uh, facility and all? Surely for these young students, um, this is really a serious question and very important question. Because once you had to go for a PhD, if it is not a quality PhD and you have not been trained well, then there is no logic of pursuing that PhD. We have a lot of lot number of PhDs from many good universities, from universities as well as many good universities, who after completing 10, 10 years of PhD have not got the jobs, neither they are getting the postdocs. So if you are the selection of the institute, selection of the guide, and selection, um, um, these two selections, and whether the lab is having a, good uh, they are having good resources at their disposal 
if the boss is not having any uh, this project, so this should be the first criteria if he's having any funding or not. Second is if the lab is going to get started or it is already established. There may be you are you are playing with this because if the lab is going to establish the person who wants to establish the lab because all the labs cannot be established. Somebody is coming after postdoc from US. He has a good exposure, but he is now starting the lab in India. Find somebody is a DST Inspire fellow, a Ramanujan fellow, a Ramalongi Lingaswamy fellow. They have good exposure, good research work at their disposal, but their labs are not yet established. Fine. So you are taking a risk there. Then, but you are getting certain advantage for it also because the if you are the first student of that particular uh, boss or guide so more folks will be on you and you will be getting ample time with him uh, for discussions for many other things but if there is an established lab you have to see the research output you have to see the funding then you have to see the ranking of that institution and then you have to see seek the uh, guidance from the pass outs of that because the student teacher relationship is also very important in this case when you are seeking you are spending best part of your life that is the phd five full years at least four to five years at least and this is the best part of your life you are spending with a guide and then you need to have because there are bosses who who don't care about that you are pursuing your phd they are getting uh, a PhD student, but another person may be there who will be very much strict with you, but he will give you also some output as well. So it depends upon you also whether you want to enjoy the life during these years or you want to really work hard and get something out of the PhD. So it depends upon you also. If you, you, you want to achieve something, in my opinion, the research institutes are meant for the research. So the first preference should be that. And then now in NEP 2020, there is a provision of academic universities, then research universities and research come academic universities. But the research institutes are the best, but they have limited number of seats. And the minimum quality, uh, this eligibility is that you should have a valid JRF net with you. Then and then you will be allowed to apply for that. But in most of the universities, it is if the JRFs are not available, then you are having MPhil, you are still eligible. You are having gate qualification, you are eligible, exempted from that entrance. And if those all are not available, then you can have an entrance exam and secure 50% of the marks in that exam, then you are also eligible for the PhD, which is not the case in the research institutes where the valid JRF net is the precondition for applying. Then there are group discussions, for example, I will talk to you about the some institutes like ICGEB is in Delhi. It, it uh, you should have first a JRF, then there will be entrance screening test again. You qualify that, then there is group discussion one, then there is group discussion two, and then in between you have to write the scientific write ups and all that. So after three rounds of these interviews and interactions and group discussions, you are making it to the final list. As against in some universities, you have JRF. There are number of vacancies are there and you qualify that you need not to appear for any interview. And then at the most, it may be one sh short interaction or a DRC of the department, which will allow you to come and join the PhD program. So I believe the research labs have a regressive mechanism of selection and that, that uh, really uh, are doing uh, um, this uh, meticulous planning of how to make the entry of the students into the system because JRF is there, one interview, group discussion, second group discussion, and finally you are evaluated and you are being given a choice to work with which scientist you want to work. So then it depends upon the student as well. What are his priorities? Because then some people are in some part of the country, they don't want to move to the next part where the research institute is located. So that depends upon the student if he wants to earn locally uh, a degree or PhD, but there he needs to keep those things in mind, whether the boss is having some publication background, he's having a research background, or he is really working hard, or is he having a research lab uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, sir, uh, there is uh, one more thing. One student here asked, sir, sir after MSc uh, in biotechnology, what are the different field except PhD? So that means, uh, the students want to ask ki agar mujhe phd pursue nahi karna hai to what are the job options after masters in biotechnology 
if in after masters there are many industries which are presently in india uh, especially the startups since the last 2 3 years there has been a great demand of startups because there has been certain exemptions in in terms of the taxes fine if there is a um, scientist working in some institute and he wants to have his own startup and this has given a boost to the scientific community so once there are a lot of startups now coming up in india if you have you are a trained workforce if you are msc uh, biotechnology so there are a lot of biotech industry similarly somebody is in masters food technologist there are a lot of food uh, industries in india fine there are food inspectors everywhere you can see that in, in nook and corner of the country food inspectors are being appointed fine those pollution control inspectors are being appointed then fisheries inspectors are being appointed fine all across so quality uh, assurance inspectors are being appointed similarly the in order to the pharma companies for example a lot okay. of pharma companies are there which are ask these masters with biotechnologies because every time they don't give the advertisements to have phd's only uh, sorry masters. to interrupt you sir ek 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 aur cheez main usme add karna chahunga ki suppose uh, there is a student who has uh, like completed it, his or her masters in biotechnology and he don't want to pursue the phd but he has net so तो क्या बेनिफिट्स हो सकते हैं उस नेट के ड्यूरिंग सर्चिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ जॉब्स और क्या अपॉर्चुनिटीज उसको एडिशनली मिल सकती है इफ ही और सी हैज अ नेट इन लाइफ साइंसेस इफ समबडी हैज नेट ओनली ही डजंट हैव द फेलोशिप देन मेनी प्रोजेक्ट्स आर बीइंग रन बाय मेनी साइंटिस्ट्स इन यूनिवर्सिटीज सो देयर इज अ प्रोविजन दैट यू आर हैविंग अ जूनियर असिस्टेंट और जेआरएफ और एसआरएफ in them or research associate in them you are easily eligible for that and the preference will be given to you without qualifying going to the phd which is a four or five years of program you can simply join as research associate or junior research fellow or srf and then move to abroad for pursuing phd in foreign countries or you can get trained for this one year period two year period and then go and join the industry pharma industry or biotech industry anywhere in the world great great okay okay sir that's nice uh, okay then now uh, uh, according to you is it okay to pursue phd without any fellowship or is there any uh, like any ad, uh, like financial ad is there what can so, uh, what can uh, okay a uh, baki benefits kya ho sakte hain student ko if he or she has a valid fellowship aur kya agar bina fellowship ke wo phd kar raha hai ya kar rahi hai aur ek fellowship ke sath mein kar rahe hain to kya advantage ho sakte hain us student ko so my personal uh, mean suggestion in this case would be because the financial constraint is a very important thing yes. fine everybody is searching here and their job because of the finances and during these last 2 3 years we had seen that the the financial assistance had squeezed because of the covid uh, pandemic fine so joining a phd without a fellowship and it is a huge uh, time period 5 years 4 years and this is a age uh, when you your parents want you to be financially independent because you are grown up uh, of 25 years or 20 30 years or 20 about 20 30 years age group so your parents would not want you to be a financial burden on them it's always better to have a valid fellowship with you and then only join even if after masters you have to wait for 6 months compete for that fellowship exam clear that and then and then join the exam because one thing is that if you have fellowship that means you will clear the net automatically so net jrf is there first thing is that you become eligible for the assistant professorship in college as well as in the universities second thing is that um, uh, the financial independence you are getting it fine and you are having a contingency uh, also to that then when you are applying for the assistant professor post in a college or in a university you are being given extra points if somebody is only phd and somebody is phd with jrf net so obviously you will be getting phd is getting right now 30 points and jrf net is getting 10 points so phd is a 5 year program or 4 year program at least and then jrf net is just an exam which you are passing maybe even in a one month after two months of serious preparations after uh, msc you can qualify that and you are earn 10 points 
in most of the public service commissions when they ask for these uh, assistant professor posts in different public service commissions across the country there is a scheme that they give you five points for publications even if you have 30 publications still they will give you five points and if you are having net jrf that they will give you 10 points so it's a huge huge thing it comes over there besides financial implications you are getting 10 extra points if you have uh, applied or you have uh, carried on the phd without a fellowship so that is one thing second thing is fellowship is already always it's a blessing when you have the finances you are at least not having the burden that i am unemployed so you are an employed person carrying or pursuing the phd at the same time Exactly. So it depends upon if somebody is not getting it and then he has a sound financial background, he can pursue it. There is no harm in do doing that as well. Okay, good. Great, sir. So there are some students who is asking for some books for cracking NetJR. So I personally suggest that uh, yes. there are some standard books for preparation of uh, CSIR or uh, any other fellowship, CSIR, NetJRF, ICMR, DBT, JRF. So you can go uh, some of the videos uh, posted by me, posted by Baiju's group on the YouTube. There are uh, discussion about those books, uh, those important books, like for different subjects, there are different books, like for uh, biochemistry, there is Leninger, Voight and Voight, and then for, for cell biology, there is Lordis, there is uh, Carr, uh, there, there is uh, Bruce Elbert, for molecular biology, there is Watson, for immunology, there is Cube, Genway, for uh, plant physiology, there is Tyson Zeiger, for animal physiology, we have uh, uh like guyton hall for developmental biology we have gilbert for techniques we have uh like uh, ta brown and other books so th those are the important books and uh yes uh Abhi or besides or that i would add that there are some books which are coming from different publishing houses like we have a pathfinder series yeah exactly exactly Fine. exactly and uh, we have a triple im series indian Institute of management studies they are having different objective type and subjective type books Find the, if you go to the market to any bookseller, you will find that there are, or that per, uh, per se, that there are IS coaching materials available from Evolution Academy or many other academies across India, which are um, this. But the only thing is that if you study uh, at master's level, in different semesters of master's level, when you are earning those uh, credits, uh, in 64 credits in, in, uh, in a master's program, you almost to uh, are done with all of the things what are what is being asked in the net if you really uh, read them seriously those topics you clear the concepts i don't think that you you had to bank only upon those specific books or those um, uh, those objective type of books or those exam preparation books when your concepts are clear you have seriously studied for these two years but one thing is that uh, unfortunately when students enter into a university from a college system. So, so they, they thought that it is just like college. So university setup is a different thing. You, are, you have to burn your midnight oil. I'm not saying that in college level or other levels, you don't have to, but university is a total serious business where you had to be serious because you had chosen higher education by choice. So you are coming for the master's program. In master's program, you had to have some exam qualified besides you. Either it should be a JRF net or it should be an employment exam or it should be a civil services exam or, or, or any other exam as a job of employment. After master's, even qualifying the master's, then you will roam here and there searching for the job or, or uh, those things. So, so I believe that uh, the, the steam is somehow, uh, somehow lost when you move from college education to the university education system, there you need to actually gear up your things and you need to be a voracious reader, reader, especially of the textbooks, not from searching here and there from the net, as we do in the college that searching here and then and get the ready-made notes and then take exams and do that, uh, do away with them. But here you need to be serious. You need to be a voracious reader, especially of the books and then you need to clear your concepts and keep a tap on or keep an eye on the examinations. What is the exam? When it is coming? What is my preparation level? So that you, once you complete the master's, you had that exam with, with you. Similarly, you had to also try to be the topper of the department. For example, if you are for the DST. Team, so for DST Inspire, yes, you'll exactly. be automatically <clears throat> getting that. Fine. So that is one of the things. Then there is 
uh, meritorious fellowship being given to the toppers of the department, two from every department. Fine, then there is a single child, Indira Gandhi single child education scheme. If you are going to the masters and you are the only single child of female single child of your parents, then you are eligible for that. Fine, then you need to search on the different web portals that what are the different fellowships schemes launched by the government of India. There is a document available on the uh, uh, net. I can also share the link in this YouTube description where the, all the ministries fellowships are there. You need to go whether you are, uh, you are, your degree or your subject of interest is with the Ministry of Coal or it is with the Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Finances, like economic subject background you are, or it is with the Ministry of uh, Sciences or Biotechnology. And you, you can find that there are lists of fellowships which are being offered from that. But unfortunately, there is not awareness about that exactly at, at the student level. So I think the, the there should be a um, uh, workshop or uh, some sort sort of webinar uh, conducted by every university when the new batch comes. So that should be made aware about those different types of fellowships, different types of programs, avenues, PhDs, and degrees, and what next. So so that is that is a must for every university to conduct for the when the new entrants come. A, a batch of, for example, now the admissions for 2020 will be held. So in, in 2020, the issue, university should gear up after admitting the students before starting the classes, give them uh, this uh, detailed awareness by conducting webinars or conducting all, uh, offline even seminars or workshops for the students, um, bringing in the distinguished speakers who had a lot of experience in the academics to, to guide them or to map their career preferences. Because career mapping is a very important aspect. We haphazardly go into uh, acquiring degree after degree without having the where it should lead, where it will lead me. So career mapping is, a, uh, is very important. And we need to choose the right course because right now there are jobs available in the data science field, artificial intelligence field, the deep learning field, and, and then advanced levels, for example, IT, neural network systems, but and human genetics and uh, counseling, but we don't have the graduates and postgraduates available in those fields. So the career counseling is a very important thing and a child should be uh, given the opportunity and the awareness what after acquiring this you will be getting. And the, there is a syllabus curriculum part that every syllabus or every four credits, every paper should have a learning objective, learning outcome and course curriculum. But in, if you see the syllabus or curriculum available on the internet of most of the universities, that's lacking. So that is one of the shortcomings because student gets aware about what is expected from me and where it will lead to be as far as the job market is concerned. Exactly, sir. Exactly. Very informative. So there is uh, one more question. Uh, how efficient is to choose applied application research rather than fundamental research topic? Uh, there is a debate going on since long. Fine. If you if you find that the scientists themselves are dividing, because exactly. the government, as far as the administration and the government is concerned, they want all the scientists to come up with the solutions for the existing problems day in and day out. It's not it's not going to happen like that way. If Watson and Crick would have thought about that. Uh, that DNA double helix model is one day going to come for the CRISPR-Cas technology level or gene editing level, so then that discovery would have never ever never. been possible. Similarly, there are n number of examples across the science where you find that it is first the fundamental sciences or basic sciences which have led us to these pathfinding breakthroughs. When the George Kohler and Cesar Milstein came up with the um, discovery of monoclonal antibodies, nobody was knowing that there will be now, then the magic bullets. And then be because the um, development of these monoclonal antibodies had a lot of literature, a lot of scientific work was already done. Similarly for Watson and Crick's, a lot of work was already done uh, from the basic sciences. And when all of this is compiled, then and then you can come with the application-based research. Although I'm not denying that more folks should be on the 
goal oriented goal oriented or application oriented science should be there but that again uh, requires a huge funding uh, which 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 is not available as of now fine uh, we know that the, uh, how much spending is on the science and research as compared to the foreign countries so we cannot expect that what is the application based research which is coming from japan or china or uh, west or us and then we can expect it same from here so first there needs to be infrastructure to be developed then the infrastructure then more funding needs to be pumped in and the talent pool which is outside that need to be nurtured and slowly and slowly we can have good things and it's not that the good things are coming from india as well yes sir exactly uh, so, so both of them uh, go in hand in hand you have to focus on the application part as well as you have to focus on the fundamental part as well exactly sir without basic research like you cannot directly go to the applied sciences so there must be some basic research over there. somebody has to do the basics yeah, exactly. and then and then some guy will come and make uh, chip in and then he can uh, uh, join those dots together and then come up with some solution exactly <coughs> okay thank you uh, thank you so much uh, manjur sir so now the, the, uh, there there uh, is there any special message for dear student for their life and upcoming attempts of examination like there are many examination comings like csir that will be there in june dbt will be there in april and there is bar exam and there are icmr exam so is there any special uh, message for the uh, so appearing students my side uh, the special message is that there is no capsule or tablet or medicine directly to success you have to work hard burn midnight oil then and then the success will come to you there are no shortcuts you will say that i will join this and this academy and it will lead me to the jrf it's not going to happen no doubt that these academies different academies at different levels will guide you will counsel you will facilitate you but it is you whose efforts will prevail on all of this if you are not making efforts you join whatever academy you join you are not going to succeed the academy is very important any of the those, those agencies what we we join as of now so they will facilitate you they will guide you they will make your path of journey easy but it's you who with the dedication with the devotion and with determination has to be focused on your goal unless you don't achieve it so and be uh, the planning is very important the selection of the syllabus material is very important because you have the syllabus some people go and randomly read all the 41 topics available in the net but it's not going to happen you have a lot of choices in there so you have to select the topics where your basic concepts are clear even though because you also know the cut off that if this year it was 95 or 97 next year it may not go 120 so it's going to remain in that range of 105 110 so you know how many topics i need to study for that so that you can clear that and some some i had often heard that from students i had a very good preparation but this year paper was either easy or it was too tough you have to be ready for both the easy paper as well as the tough paper if you are ready the easy paper will come still you will be there if the tough paper comes still the merit will be low and you will be there also exactly so it is with the, and you have to um, invoke one swot analysis know your strengths know your weaknesses take in the opportunities and target them and then you are going to achieve that एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली सर सो बेसिकली यही एक हमारा होना चाहिए कि हम लोगों को जो है मेजर फोकस करना चाहिए अपने सेल्फ सेल्फ पर हमें जो है लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर आर मैनी इंस्टीट्यूट दैट प्रोवाइड यू गाइडेंस दैट गिव यू अ पाथ बट इट इज यू हु इज गोइंग टू अपियर आपको कितना हार्ड वर्क आपने किया है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी लाइक वही आपको रिजल्ट देगा exactly so uh, there are some student who is asking um, let me answer you some of the student there are some student who is asking like csi net in geology so basically mai aap logo ko bolna chahunga ki there is no like csi net in geology botany and and biochemistry molecular biology there is a combined test csi net life science and under the life science you can like there are uh, many courses you can apply for the same paper 
if you are masters in zoology botany microbiology molecular biology biochemistry biotechnology uh, molecular medicine whatever life science subjects are there you all are eligible for that csir net exam okay uh, also there are some questions for best book for uh, zoology uh, so basically there is no specific book for zoology you can like you can go for some uh, books for physiology like for zoology there is guyton and hall for developmental biology there is gilbert बट दो आर वेरी लाइक बहुत ही ह्यूज बुक्स हैं सब कुछ उसमें से नहीं पढ़ना सर ने जैसे कि बताया कि बहुत सारी चॉइसेस होती हैं तो आपको अपनी स्ट्रेंथ पर ज्यादा फोकस करना है व्हाट यू हैव लाइक रीड इन योर मास्टर्स इन बैचलर व्हाट इज योर कौन कौन से कॉन्सेप्ट आपके जो है बहुत अच्छे से क्लियर है उन्हीं को ज्यादा फोकस में आपने पढ़ना है बाकी रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स तो आपको चॉइस में भी मिल जाती है because once you had come through you were first at the 12th level competing for the medical entrance examination then to be honest and truthful we didn't get over there then carried on with the ms uh, masters uh, bachelors and then went to the uh, masters and when you see you are doing the masters a uh, lot of things you study in between the taxonomy which you are not going to remember obviously the many things the, then you need to go back to the square zero back to that uh, ground zero that is the 12th so you have to see what topics in the net are matching with my 12th exams because for 12th you had tried very hard for this neat and the pmts and various cet exams you again study that for some part of the time maybe one month two month rigorous studies that will keep your basic concepts clear fine once those are clear then you can go to the higher end syllabus which is particularly of that net jr so that is going to improve your score and you will obviously be because there are 10 20 questions in every net examination which are from that basic level of 12th 11th exactly. and 12th so if you study that 11th and 12th for a quick fire type of round for one month or one and a half month and then go back to your actual syllabus that is going to help you Yes, yes, obviously that is that is going to help you क्योंकि अगर आपके basics clear होंगे basics fundamentals भी जो clear होंगे तो obviously in the B section you will get some question in the C section you will get some question जहाँ पर basic understanding से ही आप जो capable होंगे questions को solve करने के लिए uh, right sir so uh, thank you Manjur sir for uh, your valuable time और students को भी काफी students ने भी काफी enjoy किया और questions वगैरह पूछे बाकी जो personal question है we will uh, separately discuss to the uh, students okay thank you so yes, much manjur sir always uh, we are always there for them anybody having this is free of cost we are always uh, there for you people you have questions you had queries you require some study material whatever is available with you us we are going to provide it with to you uh, my name uh, email id is simply dr manjur at kashmir university dot ac dot in or you can reach uh, uh, to me or uh, even through phone but don't bother through phone that much you can drop a message in whatsapp what you require we are going to facilitate specific questions whatever you have we are going to be and uh, always we are there for academic activities thank you so okay. much thank you so much manjur sir thank you thank you so much thank you okay sir uh, abhi aap leave kar sakte hain okay